This meeting is being recorded. Okay. And then if everybody um, wants to mute themselves, that would be great. All right, while we're waiting to get started, um, I wanted to tell you a little story. Um, and this is how I kind of got the idea to do this um, program. There we go. I'm gonna get the chat closed up so I can see so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so this is how I got the idea to do this program. My um, my husband and I have two adult sons, and my husband is a huge collector of record albums and vintage stereo equipment. It's not really vintage, it's just from like back in the day when we were kids. Um, but he loves it, my basement is full of it. Is full of it. And um, there's always music going on in our house, I always know where he is. Um, now, he doesn't always play the records or use the equipment at all. Uh, he's kind of a Spotify guy these days, but he still loves, loves the albums, loves to break them out once in a while. So one day we were having a conversation um, with our two adult sons um, around a table and <clears throat> we kind of got on this subject and my husband said to them, when I die, there are some albums in the basement that are worth a lot of money. And unfortunately for him, one of our sons looked him straight in the eye and said, when you die, it's all going to the curb. And I've literally heard a, you know, breath get, come out of him. Um, it was just, it, it was heart wrenching to him because this is something that he really enjoys. And, you know, not that our, our two kids don't enjoy it, but they don't have the interest he does. And so this is when we started, you know, the conversation of, you know, let's go ahead and start downsizing. Um, there is a real um, interest in this lately, we're seeing this as professional organizers, uh, because I think somewhat because of the pandemic, um, maybe the older generation realized that, uh, oh, I really want to be closer to my kids. And I don't want I don't want to have to move all this stuff with me. You know, I'm living in the house I've been in 40 years. And there's a lot of stuff that's not important to me anymore. So um, I'm going to I'm going to make sure everyone's muted. Not sure how to do that. So let's just hope everyone's quiet. Um, so oh, and let's moving on. So we are talking about the baby boomer generation who are, you know, we're all either retired or in the midst of or soon to be. Right. And so that's me, the soon to be retired. Um, and we started that process of looking at what we own and deciding whether it really fits into our life right now. Um, <clears throat> this is um, the, the shift. And um, there's a great book out on the market that I'm going to hold it up for you. And I'm sure I'm sure Hazel is familiar with it called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And um, it's just a short little book. You know, see, I have all my tabs. It's a really good book the, that really discusses how the um, people in Sweden, how the lifestyle is that once you turn, um, you know, mid-aged, once you're kind of a baby boomer, uh, I mean, um, like a empty nester kind of age, that it's time to start um, uh, eliminating the things that are, that you're living with that really don't, aren't serving a purpose for you anymore. And it really makes a lot of sense that you would, um, you know, as you grow up, as you grow up and you start collecting things and then you buy a house and then you have kids and then you buy a bigger house and then you and all of a sudden you're a, an empty nester and then you don't need as much space. You don't need as much stuff. Um, we work with clients all the time that have rooms full of stuff that, you know, they're it was their kids and they're still hanging on to it. It's a really good idea to start about a Three, or two thirds of the way through your life is to start looking at those things. Um, 
And so I suggest if you really want any, any information to look for that book, The, the Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. Um, and it really will encourage you to downsize before you actually need to downsize to move to a smaller place if that's ever an option. And um, I just read yesterday in an article that the book is being made into a series um, Amy Poehler is one of the producers of the show, and it's going to be aired on Peacock Network, which I don't have, but um, I will try to find the series um, once it comes out. I think it's really encouraging you to, you know, at about, I don't know, 55, 60, 65, to start looking at, you know, what's what's in your space that's just not, not working for you right now, and then to, to process it through your life. Um, so you want to start looking at, you know, what does my life look like? Do I want to move closer to my grandkids or do I want to move to a warmer climate? And what does that mean? Maybe some of the things that you're using now, if you live in my area, you own a winter coat or two or three, right? But, um, you know, I talk to people all the time who are moving to Florida and they're not going to need winter coats or you're going to need maybe need one. So you start looking at those things too. So what what's holding you back from moving forward in your life? Um, we do a lot of work with clients who are downsizing, and this is what we do. What's what's holding you back? We talk to so many people that wanted to move two years ago or decided to move at the beginning of the pandemic, but then never. But then the pandemic kept them from moving. So now they've been sitting on this for two years and they really want to start moving forward on this project. And so, and if the housing market is crazy, like it is here where you live, it's also the fact like, you know, you got to, you got to strike while the iron's hot. So you need to be prepared. So the, the, Starting the downsizing process will prepare you for that. Um, and, but so while we're why we are here today is I want to talk about that um, part of the di- downsizing process is that p- you're saving things for your kids. And um, our generation is very different from the younger generation. I think we all took things from our parents or our grandparents and and have them in our homes. And hopefully you're honoring those people by displaying or using those items. Um, I was very thoughtful when I was offered things um, from relatives that I only took a couple of things and I used them. They are either decoration in my house or I literally they were functional and I used them and I used them until they were unusable anymore. But I feel like that is a great way to honor that person and to remind them every day. Um, One thing I took um, from a great aunt who passed away was a coat she wore and it was just an everyday wool pea coat. Um, I wore it for probably 15 years till it was really worn out. But you know what? Every time I put that coat on in the winter, it would remind me of her. And so that's a a really great way that, you know, you can honor gifts from um, older relatives. Now, do we do that? Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. But your kids don't even want the things. They are really of a different mindset Um, They're traveling lighter, you know, they just, they um, can't afford a home, maybe the size you're living in. Um, And they just live differently. You know, no one entertains like they used to and and all of those things. So, you know, what does this mean? It means you're going to have to work at parting with your collections um, and uh, that don't serve you anymore and not doing it from a, a point of guilt. Do it with the point of, you know, eager to move on with your life. Um, and so it's when you're work, when you're offering these things to your kids, um, my suggestion is to find a happy middle ground with your kids. So we're going to talk about what that means um, with I have 12 thoughts or of things that your kids might actually one day want to inherit from you. So the first thing we're going to go with the low hanging fruit. The first thing is your assets. Of course they want your assets. Oh, they'll happily take your house or your car because those things have a value and they are of purpose. And um, so, you know, I don't think there's going to be any great discussion with that one. Um, they probably want some photos. So let's say some in that, in that 
um, in, in that sentence, right? Um, sit down and ask them how many photos they like. Um, I, I have some visual aids here for today. You know, this is one photo album of mine. It's heavy. I don't ever pick it up and carry it around, right? Who wants, you know, 40 of those? It's just overwhelming. So your kids might want some photos, but they don't want the work of finding the photos that they want. And they don't want whole albums and they want them digitized. They want them online. So they might like some of the old, you know, antique uh, pictures of relatives from the past, but they don't want to be responsible for those um, frame, you know, big framed items. So one thing you can do is talk to your kids about what they would like. Uh, do they want some photos? Is that going to become a project for you to do? Or maybe they would be willing. I had a client recently who was very successful in asking his son if he would like to sit down when he comes to visit and just th look through one album with him. And then you can, you know, reminisce and um, talk about the vacations that are in that album or whatever. And then the son was was telling dad which pictures he wanted um, copies of. So then he knew that the entire album wasn't going to be uh, was he wasn't going to be passed down to him. Um, but the photos that meant something to him um, really were. And um, so my friend Hazel is on the call tonight today. And I thank you so much, Hazel. And I wanted to mention that um, along with photos is your kids want to know they're not going to take a photo of somebody they don't know who it is in, in the photo. So they, they want the story behind the photo. It means much more to them if they have the story behind the photo. So Hazel is the author of a book that's called What's a Photo Without a Story? How to Create Your Family Legacy by Hazel Thornton. So yes, yeah, so she's holding it up. Thank you, Hazel. I think it's a great um, way to really learn like how to process through those things through um, through all your photos. Okay, so the next one is, of course, well, most of the time, your children would be really happy to take like special jewelry, because one, there is a monetary value, um, sometimes with jewelry, but also it might be the thing that you pulled out on the special occasion on, you know, mom wore for anniversary dinner or something. So there's a, they have a memory of that. There's this, there's special meaning to that, but also it also has monetary value. Uh, so you want to consider that. So the first three that your kids might want to inherit are your assets, your large assets, some photos and special jewelry. So we're moving on to number four, which is memorabilia. So I want to say knickknacks. Now, your kids don't want all your knickknacks. You probably, if you if they are adults, that you've probably seen um, in their homes that they don't have that um, much of that stuff. But again, if they have the, if they want something, it's usually going to be something small. So. Um, my, my next visual aid. Everyone knows what these are. My mom was, was a huge collector of Hummels. Uh, fortunately, she had five children, so she's been able to disperse them amongst her five children, and she actually still has a nice a size collection at her own house. Then they mean a lot to her. We've all, all my, my siblings and I have all taken some of them, but it's in a very small amount. I think I might have four or five. Um, and I'm happy to take them because they're not taking up that much space. And I know my mother loves them. So the second thing you might want to do is it, when you take uh, something that is from a past relative or when you want to hand something down to your kids is to treat it special. And I mentioned this before to honor it in some way. So um, this is a watch from my husband's grandfather. And it was a, um, remember how you we used to, um, when you retired from a company, they would give you a watch, right? So this was the watch he received when he retired uh, from his career. And it means a lot to my husband. Now, it's not stashed away in a box in the basement or in some drawer. We went out, out and bought the little glass globe for a couple of bucks. And it sits um, in, on a shelf in our living room. And this is the way we have honored that man. 
Um, and it's something small, but it's something we see all the time. So it adds value to our life. So consider, ask your kids what knickknacks they would like from your house. So then the next thing that your kids might want to inherit are holiday memories. Now they may be in the form of items, right? So it's the things you pulled out every year and you talked about, you know, that this used to be grandma's and um, this, you, or this is, was part of the farm or what, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, because it has a memory associated with them. I don't have, I don't have much. Um, I don't have anything even from past relatives. Um, and I really don't think my kids are going to want anything from, you know, decorations or what from the holidays. But I grabbed this one. Again, you know, my kids are, are grown men, but they loved the movie Aladdin. And this was a, a Christmas tree ornament that's the little uh, monkey from Aladdin. And they, you know, maybe that's something they would like. It's certainly not going to break my heart if they don't want it. Um, so that might be something, too. It's something that they have a memory associated with it, with the holidays. Um, and don't be surprised if they only want one item from that category. Uh, the next item that your kids might want to inherit is what I call accent furniture. So again, the younger generation is living in smaller spaces. Um, if, if they're young enough, it, a lot of times they move quite often. They don't have space for a large dining room table or a china cabinet or a big bed or a big, big dresser or um, something like that. But they might like the small accent piece that you have. And um, because they are more, um, they think more environmentally friendly. And so to reuse an item, um, you know, a lot of things that we have are of better quality than they would go out and purchase for as new. So they'll get something that's solid wood and that's non-toxic and so, and they're being sustainable then. Um, and a statistic for you is Americans dump 12 million tons of furnishings in landfills um, they did in 2017. And that was 5% of the total solid waste in our country that year. So a huge portion of what we're throwing away is this you know, cheap thrown together furniture that people are buying when they're 23 and, you know, before they, and they move a couple of times and then it's goes to the curb because it's just, it just doesn't last. Um, so then maybe at a little bit older age, they realize like I can get much better quality if I buy used or if I, if I take stuff from my parents when they offer it to me. So be really open to offering it at the right point in your children's life, which is when they're moving to a bigger place and offered it to get it to their new place. Um, and maybe they would be happy with that. But, all, but remember, please consider that um, they probably don't entertain as formally as you used to. Um, so they're not going to want the china cabinet with the china or the crystal. Um, they may not have a large enough living space for the for grandpa's chair or, you know, the giant sideboard um, or the big antique bed. Um, it's just it's a, it's a matter of space, really. Um, but there is a, a, a resurgence of young people who are really looking for um, it's a older furniture uh, of a better quality. It's called grand millennial style. Now it's because it is a cozier looking um, furniture than the you know white IKEA stuff. Um, but don't be surprised if your kids take it and then they paint the furniture because there is not a, a big um, love for the big dark brown wood furniture. So you may show up at their house one day to find a blue, a blue dresser instead of the dark brown dresser that you gave them a year before. So I hope everybody can <laughs> take a deep breath after that one. Um, the next thing on the list, which is exactly what I started talking about earlier is record albums. There is actually an interest in record albums these days, just not by my kids. Um, so you'll find um, wherever you live, probably um, used or 
record stores um, where you can sell your collection, but also there is the um, uh, some um, buyers from the younger generation. So again, consider that. Ask your kids if they if they'd be interested. They might only want a portion of your collection, but and they're probably going to choose the records that they remember you playing. So if you um, were the type that had dance parties in your house, or you were a huge Beatles fan and you listened to it until your kids left the house. Um, those are the ones that they might really be interested in having. Um, the next thing on the list, um, which I only have one little example. This is a, a gift that I received. This is just one example. Your kids might want grandma's old recipes. So that is something that you might not want to throw out is the paper recipe cards, the recipe box that maybe was in her house if you still have it. Or if you would like to do the gift your recipes to your own children. So this is the same, the same aunt, the same great aunt of mine that um, that I got the coat from uh, had, did a gift. She had no, she had no children and thus no grandchildren of her own, but she gifted my all of my grandmother's grandchildren. So her sister's grand her sister's grandchildren, she put together, this is back in the day, she typed it on a typewriter and then Xeroxed it on a copy machine. Um, and made cards that were my grandmother's recipes that everybody, that everyone wanted. Some of them even have little handwriting on them. And, and to me, that's like super valuable. You know, it still sits on my kitchen counter, even though I probably go to that recipe box maybe once a year. Um, so consider that that's something that, you know, could, could mean a lot. Again, a lot of memories. And people would kind of think like, that's not really something that my kids would be interested in. It's like an everyday thing, right? Um, unfortunately, I, my mother-in-law passed away quite young. Um, my kids were already around and they do remember her, but, um, but she did, but it was, they were pretty young. And unfortunately she did not write down recipes and she had a couple of recipes that we can't, we haven't been able to recreate for, years, my kids would ask their grandfather, like, do you remember Graham's meatball recipe? We just can't make them like Graham used to make meatballs. And so consider that as a great gift that you could just give your kids and, and would have a lot of meaning to them. Uh, the ninth thing that your kids might want to someday inherit is the family tools or the family toolbox. Depends on how you know, how much you have, right? Now, what I'm really talking about is they want usable items. Um, and so, you know, everybody could always use an extra hammer or some screwdrivers, right? And especially when they're young and like moving to their first place, if you have quite a collection and you're not using them all, gather them up. I think they would think that was great that they got this gift from their parents that they may remember them being in the garage or the storage room or the shed. Um, so really, they want very practical. They want screwdrivers. They want hammers. They want they want rule you know um, rulers, measuring tapes. What they really really want is this kind of thing. You know, the world has come out with like electric power tools, and you can buy like entire sets. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to give them the the set of power tools that was hundreds of dollars. You know, that you just bought last year, but when you are no longer doing any of your own DIY, then maybe it's time to offer those tools to down, you know, to pass them down to somebody else who could really use them. So it needs to be in good condition and it needs to be practical and it need, like good, good condition in working order. So don't give them anything rusty and don't give them anything that the batteries don't, you know, are, are dead. Um, Cause they, they, that, that just makes another project for them, right? So the next thing is, again, we're dealing with memories here. Your kids might want um, toys from when they were young. Um, so this was the only one I grabbed. Um, we were we were a big um, board game, game playing family um, when my kids were really young. This was like pre-computer um, games and video games. Um, and but then when when all of that came out, kind of kind of shut down the board games. 
So, um, so we have already uh, downsized our board games. You know, we went from a, a, a several shelves of, of games, of boxed up games, to a handful of games. So maybe one day I will have grandchildren and I can pull out a couple of games and it's something that I can do with them. I certainly am not going to try to pass these couple of games on to my kids. Um, these were the ones that I think they would have memories of playing with us, um, but they can also go out and purchase a game if they really want them. Times have changed. I don't, you know, certainly people do play board games, but some people don't play them like they used to. So again, um, might be a stuffed animal or a favorite toy, or if your kids were really into sports, it might be, you know, a baseball mitt or a soccer ball or a set of golf clubs, or maybe it's just the team jerseys that they had um, as they were going through, you know, kind of the little league sports um, type of stuff. So consider that that's an option. Um, the next thing you might be surprised is that your kids might someday like um, some artwork that they made when they were kids. Now, when they're six, they love their artwork, but when they're 26, they might not love their six-year-old artwork. Um, so I really caution you to only save the best of the best, and that's because that's all they're going to want. They do not want the project of sorting through years worth of schoolwork and art projects that you, if you've collected everything, you have passed, you have just pushed that decision-making process onto their shoulders. If you hand them boxes and boxes and boxes of the, of the stuff they did when they were really young. So um, my suggestion is um, work with your kids uh, as they, uh, you know, as they grow and let them make the decisions of what was most important in the fourth grade to them, what was most important in the fifth, you know, sixth grade, eighth grade. And if you, anybody can remember when they had young kids or, or if you do have young kids, the amount of stuff that's important to them does go down as they get older. So your four-year-old will want to save a whole lot more of what they brought home from school every day than what your 14-year-old will uh, will even bring home from school if they don't bring as much. So again, I have one box for each of my kids and you know I save things like the special notes that um, that they wrote and you know some little artwork that they drew. Um, it, we, we never pull it out. Um, my, as I said, my kids are grown. They probably don't want any of it, but at least it's only one box. Someday I'll ask them if they want it. And when they say no, then I'll just go through it and let it go. Um, one thing that is in that box is, uh, at least at the, at the time, they did school pictures every year. And I think that might be one thing that they would really enjoy looking at. Um, if you're, if you're in that point in life right now, write down the names of classmates on the back of that picture or on a separate sheet of paper, because you won't remember who those kids are 10, 20 years from now. So that's, uh, that's a good one. And then the last one is um, your kids might want what we call repurposed memories. So they might, um, you might want to take uh, one big thing is people take t-shirts and have them made into a quilt. So if you, you know, if, if you think your kids would like that, then save um, a couple of dozen, maybe three dozen, maybe that's a lot, um, t-shirts of, again, sports teams they played on or teams they followed or um, anything that really defined their, uh, their childhood. Um, and that are still in good enough shape and either you can make or you can have a quilt made. So repurposing items, and I mentioned before, like your kids might take uh, grandma's old rocking chair, but they might paint it or, you know, do like alter it in some way. So you got to be okay with that too. Be generous without any expectation that what they will do with it. Oftentimes that is really overwhelming to your kids when they say, when you say, oh, put this in my grandson's room. You know, he'll love this dress. Let your kids decide what they want to do with it and just be happy that they're, that they're really excited about taking something 
um, that you're offering. So that is my really quick, it's only half an hour. I would love to open it up to any questions for anybody. Um, so while you're gathering your, uh, you know, willingness, thank you. Um, thank you, Hazel, for putting your, your book in there. Um, if you're, if you want to think a minute about questions, um, I just want to tell you, so we are a professional organizing company in, and we work in Washington, DC and the Northern Virginia area. I have a team of organizers who work for me. Um, we do a lot of um, downsizing with clients and moves, move management. We're happy to help people um, just, you know, uh, simplify their life by, um, by creating paper, you know, paper systems for them or digital systems for them so that they can find what they're looking for. That is really the definition of being organized. It, it, your house doesn't have to look perfect. It has to be when you need something, you know where it is and you can find it. Um, and we, we also, you know, we will, we'll organize a basement or a garage or a closet or a pantry. Um, we love that kind of stuff. Um, we offer that you can work one-on-one -on -one with an organizer or you can have a team come in. Um, so, you know, if your, if your car has been sitting out on the street for several years because you have a lot of stuff in your garage and you've decided it's time to park the car in the garage, we can come in as a team and in a Saturday, we can get your car in the garage. We can have everything organized so that you can fit your car in the garage. Um, it is really an, uh, a gift that you can give to yourself. And since in the last couple of years, we've all realized how much time we spend at home now. And um, so maybe it's, the, it's something, a gift you can give yourself by um, making your space really work for you. Um, so Hazel, you add, do I have a blog post about this, about this um, seminar? About is that what you're asking? Yeah, no, but I should write one, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes, you should. And if you do, I'll put it on my resource list on my website. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, what about old tools from grandparents, perhaps? They don't make them like they used to. No, they do not. They, they do not. A lot of things around your house, you could say, they don't make them like they used to. Um, if you have uh, someone who values those old tools, they may not, they may, if they're, if they're workable, you may really find, you know, find somebody who's really happy to have them. Um, we have a couple of old tools that came from grandparents that we just display because we knew those were granddads. And, you know, so they're um, hung on the wall. And again, um, my, I have a brother-in-law that um, was very interested in like sports equipment. And so he has a wall with, uh, a set of skis and a golf club and, you know, and all this stuff that was different people that, you know, throughout his life that meant something to him. So you can, you can also do something like that. Anyone else? I wanted to suggest, uh, I, I'm a photo organizer, digitizer. Oh, okay. um, you, can, you can also scan children's artwork so you don't have to keep the whole box of things you can just have even make a photo book out of it and stuff and then one other suggestion is is to write on the bottom of the items that you're like that they're taking with them or take a picture of it so that they can um they can know where it came from they can know the story of it like the christmas ornament you know we used to watch this movie and here's the the ornament that go, you know, the story that goes with it, so that so it has meaning not just for the people that take it, but generations beyond too. Yes, yes, I have um I have some photos um of past generations. I went back as far as I could for photos, as far as I could find, and they're hanging on a wall in my dining room. And I also have a small family tree there. And but literally on the back of the of the yeah. frame, I have written who's in that photo because some of those people I never knew, you know, they, they were uh, long ago. And so therefore, my kids aren't going to know who they are. So you really do have to document. Um, I will add, Dawn, I think um, digitizing photos that mean a lot. Oftentimes when we're helping someone downsize and they have lots of photos around their house of, you know, years, kids and grandkids and stuff. Um, I always suggest that they consider a digital frame that can be put 
prominently like five of them in front of me. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can put it in a prominent spot in your new house, um, and then because you're if you're if you're downsizing, you're not going to have the wall space, and you're not going to have the surface, the horizontal surfaces, in order to put frames out. But you don't have to lose those photos. Um, what we generally do, and I'm sure you do as well, is they can keep the photo, but we have to get we get rid of the frame. Um, oh, yeah, much I, less storage. Boxes much less storage. and boxes and boxes of frames. <laughs> I mean, people, yes. and they feel very bad that because they've spent a lot of money, but nobody, the, the next generation comes and they don't want, they, they want, want this no. this truck trunk load into you know a couple boxes, and yes. then digitize so they can find them. <laughs> Yeah, it's a I mean it's a it's a project if you're not um you know real digital friendly. Um it's it's you know there's a learning curve there, but that's why people like you and I and Hazel have business, right? Because um we can help you even if it's just get started. Again, kind of the setup and showing you how to do it, and then you know, and then you're off and running and you could do the project. I We'll often tell people like, you know, if you, if they're not moving anytime soon, like what a gift, take your retired, take all year to do it and give it as a Christmas gift to your kids. They will appreciate it. So there's, there's also videotapes and reel to reel film and audio reel. I mean, we digitize all of these things into like, you know, files so that people can watch them on their TV and their computer and stuff because they carry those boxes of eight millimeter film to the retirement communities and nobody can even watch it. So we yeah. can make it so it's all nice and pretty again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, oftentimes you, you know, in, in the back in the dark corner of the basement is, you know, there's boxes full of VHS tapes and they don't own a VHS player anymore. So the you know, if you're saving them because their family, their movies from a vacation or somebody's wedding or whatever, let's Disney. make them usable. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. make them usable because they're just taking up space and there's no, there's absolutely no way to use them. Right. right and now. that's, so, yeah, today I got eight millimeter film and, you know, people brought eight millimeter film and video, VHS tapes. And I mean, there's people have things and they can't, but they haul it around. <laughs> Yeah, because they know it's important. well. That's 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 kind of the message that I wanted to give today was the the idea of if it's not serving a purpose for you right now, then we need to move it on. It may not mean, as you're saying, it may not mean leaving your life completely, but make it work for you now. In the next generation, well, absolutely, yeah. great great point. And I loved that you said, "What was it?" Generous with your expectations and be okay if it's changed. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Con, so Connie mentioned that uh, that she has photos from her father's aunts, and they're over a hundred years old. So, um, so Connie, I wouldn't, I would have a hard time throwing those in the trash as well. Um, so, again, um, I would digitize them because the photos don't last forever. Um, so, you know, a digital version is at least getting you, you know, to up to today, today's technology, right? And there also are a lot of people who can help you, like, um, when I say repair, you know, photographs that are, are that are sun bleached or, you know, have been folded or, you know, whatever, um, so that it will look nicer as well. But I, what I what I tell people is if you can't get rid of the photos, then at least take them out of the frames. Let's put them in a photo a, appropriate box and you can just save the 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 final, you know, the the, the originals. But they're, they're really not serving you any purpose if they're sitting in a box in a closet or in your basement. So the way to enjoy those is how would you enjoy those photos today? And maybe they're hanging on a wall in your house, but your kids aren't probably are not going to want them hanging on a wall in their house. But they may want the his, you know, like like the historical perspective of it. Um, so again, they they want it digitized on a file, and as Don and Hazel do all the time, they need the story behind the photo because their kids are not going to even know who this person is if it's not. Um, documented. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, good luck to you. We I see a lot of old photos. I, I uh, just the other day saw a closet full of antique photo frames, you know, frames. And so I'm looking for yeah, some way that where there would be interest in somebody buying those. But again, you know, times have changed and people don't People don't have photographs all over their house, so they don't need frames either. Wet. I, we're, yeah, we're I have boxes and boxes of frames. I mean, I'm I'm just buried. My my parents did a great job of, thank God, downsizing before they went on, but there's still a lot, and it's just I and I have no and, time. And and actually, in all things in this in this list. Um, you know, I kept going back to the memories and photos, you know, hold so many memories. Oh, this was your great uncle, you know, Fred. And then all these memories will flood, you know, uh, and you'll tell stories about great uncle Fred and that's great. So it, that's lovely. So the documentation is the best gift you can give your kids, but in all these other things and the holiday ornaments and the, and the toys and this, it's the memory that, that makes that item important. Thank you. You know, I, I mean, I um, when I'm w working with a client, one of the great benefits of, ha of of hiring an organizer is I have no attachment. I'm not your sister or your best friend, and so I have no attachment to this stuff. There's you can tell me the story. I don't, you know, I, but I'm looking at it as a as a very detached person. And I want you and I want to support you in making that decision about what's going to happen to each item um, without, you know, I'm not bringing any emotion into it. I don't, I don't care. I don't, you know, I don't, if you want to fill your walls with photos, I, that's great. Let's do that. If that's your goal, let's do it. But if you tell me, no, I, I need to let these go. I need to move on. Then that's your goal. And so that's, that's how, you know, it's just, I, I come with no judgment and I, and I come with no expectation, except, you know, I hope that we can meet your goal. So, well, it, does anyone else have any questions? So Sue, Sue is on this call. Sue or Sue is one, she works for me. She's my right hand gal. She's my admin. And Sue, I will see you soon. <laughs> we are finally tonight um, gathering. The whole team is gathering um, to go out to dinner. This is the first time that we have been to completely together, other, you know, in person in two years, in over a little over two years. Oh, so we, yeah, we're all excited about it. So, yeah. So everyone have a great afternoon and thank you so much for joining. Um, and I hope you got something out of this presentation. If you have any questions, um, I think all of you have my email address and I will be sending out the recording hopefully tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. Thank you. Bye-bye.